It's LeVac and Goss on 104.5 The Team. This is either going to be my favorite segment of the day or least favorite segment of the day because Gattuso's involved. <laughs> um, so head coach of the UAlbany Great Danes football program, Greg Gattuso. First of all, the, the biopic, I want that hairdo back, Coach. Yeah, that That's... was a wrong side part back four <laughs> years ago when they said, hey, we need your picture real quick. <laughs> That's not even my tie. Now, here, here's my real question. How many associate and assistant head coaches do you need? Actually, we I mean you got we, like six as, of them as man. many as we can. Work, we're honestly. adding more too, so it's we're, we're... <laughs> you got you got uh, you got you got a, a associate head coach Keith Dzinski. He is also the defense coordinator, linebackers coach. I see Keith is right behind me. We're talking to him in a second. Um, let me see over here. Assistant head coach Delbert uh, we Delbert, no, no, oh yeah, all right. Uh, no, no, Delbert, no. This what, is what, like roll no? call in school you're doing. But right let's now. say like it's all like right assistant there. head coach Jim Sweeney. I heard Sweeney come like. In the door, as soon as Sweeney said hi, you hear that voice, and I got nervous. And like, like all these, how many head coaches do you need, Coach? As many as we can get. <laughs> <laughs> can I be like the third assistant head coach in charge of media? Sure, you, you, absolutely. If you can, if Pete will have you, I Rizzo will he have you in the? Uh, probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's 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 start meeting the guys. Let's let, let's go around. Let's but, meet some of the guys. All right, we'll let these guys introduce the gentlemen. Here we go. This is going to be a weird break, but enjoy it. All right, you're behind me, so introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Joe Bernard. I'm the uh, co-defense coordinator and special teams coordinator. Uh, head coach is head coach. Yeah. <laughs> we gave up that title. All right, so, so all right, next. Uh, Keith Dzinski, defense coordinator, linebackers coach. Nice. <laughs> EJ Barthel, future running back coach. All right, very cool. Jim Sweeney, offensive line Listen coach. that voice. And I'm Joe Davis, offensive coordinator, and I work with the quarterbacks. All right, so first of all, it's like, is Sweeney the one who yells at everybody when they screw up? No, really? Because he does. He's not the one. Because I would like you. He, he's he is his voice is intimidating as all get out. He, he actually is not a big yeller. You know, he's uh, he talks to them and they respect his his career and they know what he his knowledge is is strong but also they respect he's done the job for so long you know and he he does an incredible job with him and i just don't hear him yell that much maybe we need to get him to pick it up over there a little you know oh it's great now i get now i'm gonna you don't get this guy mad at me so you're former jet correct correct what do you think of the move to get the uh the the third overall pick uh, I don't follow them because I'm. Greg keeps us too busy that we don't have time to follow them. Yeah. But, Assistant head coach Jim Sweeney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean I, I know they're doing some things, and uh, obviously, uh, hopefully, it pans out. But as far as follow them, uh, I, I I worry too much of what's going on at Albany. I like it. God's gonna ask. That's a very good answer. I'm gonna go back to Coach Catuso real quick because <laughs> with all these changes going this on, is yeah, this, this is yeah. really well done. This is very it. good. <laughs> With all the changes going on, what's the toughest part for you as a head coach? Because you see people come into the program, leave the program. How do you evaluate what coaches take over what position? Because some of these guys may have worked with other positions at different jobs before. Yeah, I, you know, we had a, a, a unique opportunity this year to kind of um, get ourselves. I think we're at our optimal where we have people right now, and I think that's great. I, I really am happy with, you know, where everybody is. And, and um, you know, I think, you know, Joe Bernard, you know, has been our offensive coordinator, but he's been a, a defensive coach. He's trained on that side. Um, he's coordinating our special teams, which is a, as strong as we can be in that area. Coach Dzinski was an easy step up into that role because, you know, we worked together for a long time at Maryland, and he's he, he, he's a really strong coach. It was a big part of our success last year. Um, so that's easy. You know, Joe came in and, and has, been, has impressed me, and he's surrounded by really quality coaches on offense and, um, so we're, we're, we've made some changes, but it's, you know, our coaches are all in. It's, I, I could ask any one of these guys, I think, to do something different, and I don't think any of them would blink. You know, they, they might look at me a little crooked once in a while, but, you know, Coach Zinski, when I asked him to coach the safeties last year, he didn't blink. Um, you know, he just went and did it. He's been a linebacker coach by, by trade. And, and uh, so, you know, we, I think it, it's a special, unselfish group of people that can, can do what's right for the team and the program, and I think that's what we have right now. All right, LeVac, I'm going to go back on the carousel here and swing the mic around because spring ball is coming up, and I want to know from each coach, the goal for spring ball. Every time, you know, maybe a certain position, maybe someday. I'm going to start with Coach Joe to my left here about your goals for spring ball. What should be the goals for you all be spring ball, which March 29th, by the way. And if anybody says no injuries, 
you're lying. Give me the real. Give me the real goal <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys having us having us on today. You know, I, I think uh, from an offensive perspective, one of the things that we really want to establish in the, in the spring is some consistency. And when I say consistency, it would be. Uh, just certain players in relation to the, the positions that we're going to slot them in at, um, consistency in learning those positions, uh, consistency in practice habits, understanding uh, the expectations that we have for them every single day as football players, as student athletes. And that's something that, that we're going to consistently preach to these guys is, hey, we want you to come into to the meeting room every day. We want you to come on to the practice field every day. Uh, really understanding that you can control two things, your effort and your enthusiasm. We're not going to be able to execute every play perfectly every day, uh, but if they can bring great effort, they can be enthusiastic, they can have a positive mental attitude, then we can expect some, some consistency and, and hopefully develop some continuity and, and a little bit of brotherhood within the offense this spring. Love it. So that's, that's the, uh, the offense. Uh, Swing, you, you, you want to help with anything? Want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be another year older at the offensive line. Uh, we should be a little more experienced, so I'll, ex- I'll expect a little more from them. Uh, I like them to be a little more physical. Uh, they've been working hard in the weight room. They all look great. They all put on size. And uh, the demands are going to be higher now because they are a year experience. It's a little bit of a new system. It is, but it's not. I think the system we're implementing is going to create a lot of enthusiasm. And uh, we're going to be ready to go. Uh, we just want to make sure that each day we get a little bit better. Uh, you never want to take a step back. You always want to take a step forward. And uh, us being a little bit of a veteran offensive line, we should be able to accomplish that goal. We're live at Mohawk Honda. We've got the um, majority of the U-Albany coaching staff with us. You get to coach E.B. Token Hanks. Is that one of the reasons you took the gig? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I heard a lot, a lot of great things about him from the coaching staff, and it's really exciting for me to come in and, and work with a veteran guy that's had some success. And their whole room um, uh, has some has, has had success, and they, those guys were really coached really well. And I'm really excited about the opportunity to, to join in that room. So. Absolutely. Very cool. And uh, now, you know, over here, you, you're the first one that uh, Gattuso was pointing at when I was asking him to do work. So, uh, Coach Tatinsky, um, as do you look forward to doing all of Greg Gattuso's work and him taking credit for it? <laughs> of course. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Coach, Coach and I have had a great relationship. I re- Anything you're expecting from this team this year that, that wasn't there last year? Uh, no, I, you know, the great thing, we, we got a we got a veteran group of guys back on defense. You know, we, we're we going to miss a guy like Malachi Hoskins, so I, I think one of the biggest spots we got to figure out who's going who's gonna to replace him in a, as, a, as a defensive end this spring. Um, going back to what Joe said about offensively, we, you know, it's the same thing defensively. We, we want to be consistent. You know, we want to be able to play fast. We want to get the coaching staff all on the same page. Um, there's going to be some tweaks to the defense. That's just, that's just part of who I am. Um, but the bottom line is we, we want to be able to go out there and, and put a product, great product on the field that plays fast, plays aggressive, and hopefully holds uh, teams to, to less points than the offense can score every week. And then, uh, of course, you still got special teams to worry about. I mean, three facets of the game. Would you take Gaza on your special teams unit? Uh, no. The answer is no. A, maybe as a shield on a punt team, he's big enough. But other than that, I don't know. It'd be a little suspect. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what are you expecting from the, the special teams unit? Well, you know, I mean? we were fortunate enough last year. We redshirted a lot of really, really good, talented athletes that, uh, you know, we're going to be able to spring loose this year, especially on special teams. And, uh, you know, our philosophy has never changed on special teams as far as what we've done. I started it in year one and as we progress through with coach foster and coach Byam, we've kept the same philosophy uh that's not going to change but we've got a lot as we've grown as a program and recruiting one thing that's noticeable each year is we've been adding more and more athletes that can run in that facet of the game and i'm really excited to get some of those red shirt guys out and moving in the spring i have to give you a follow-up question and maybe the offensive defensive coach would get mad at me but i feel like special teams is still the most competitive spot on the team. Guys want to be on the bus, was the old expression. They want to travel. They want to be on kickoff. They want to be on kickoff return. Does that feel the same way that that is the most competitive spot to get on the team? You know, that's what you try to impress to the kids. Um, You know, guys that are fringe guys and may not be starters on offense or defense, you want to get on the bus. Here's your opportunity to get on the bus. Um, You know, and that's that's something that uh, the younger guys strive for. And uh, so it does get pretty competitive because they do want to get on there. That's for sure. Special teams is overlooked too much, and I think that's something where I say we're, we're going to op- operate at our, our, 
our best as a staff that's part of it is that we can be great on special teams as well there was a couple games last year you know and we worked hard on them but i think that with our depth now and the different things and with joe being able to take over that we can solve a couple issues that maybe did got us a little bit last year we got the uh, u albany coaching staff for the most part who's now what's what positions left to be filled for your coaching staff well, we're you know EJ is going to be joining us here in a couple of days officially, and and uh, so we'll be we're going to be up to snuff, and um, it it feels good to have the staff together. It was it was a very uh, crazy off season when you lose five guys and and you and you're trying to it, it's very disruptive. You know we had a recruit shorthanded, but the guys did a great job picking up the work, and and uh, you know like I said the the big thing is to be able to hire quality people back, and I think. I think we did a really good job of it. I mean, we all, all our coaches went through a pretty, you know, tough interview process, and we 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 found guys we think that fit in the chemistry, and become part of the family, and and uh, kind of mirror our approach to things. So that and they look like they could play now. For them. I mean, <laughs> well, I, don't know I about wouldn't Joe line up against there, these guys. But, uh, oh, I don't couldn't? know about Joe. He's he was a quarterback. You think he can still throw it after all these years? He looks like you know, I, I, I'm not going to go against him with the look I just got. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta get him on a basketball court and see what he got. You know, I know we're five months away from fall camp kicking off and actually getting ready for the season. But position battles with seniors and others moving out—is it that early in spring ball to talk about guys maybe fighting for starting spots both on the top eleven offense and defense? No, I, I think it's a you know you, when you look at it, everybody's fighting for a spot. I, people think it's a cliche, but it's really not in football because after a, a whole. A whole year basically there's a lot of change in kids offensive linemen we're seeing great size on our offensive linemen right now I mean we're in the weight room a couple weeks back before break and uh, you know we're 20 pounds bigger across the front which is really good um, you know there's a battle at quarterback you know Brunson did a great job but Nevin Sussman's very good so they're gonna they're gonna be in the middle of it you know EB is a, a great player to bring back but you know having Carl there to challenge him and push him is you know competition he's a bad Mofar He's, <laughs> but there's nothing. There is no better motivator than competition, and I think that's where we're at right now. Where I'm excited is, after the last four years of really recruiting hard, I think that that we have talent on our football team. I think we're a CAA team. We look like one. We're we feel like we're going to play like one this year, and and we're going to go out and have a great football season. I feel really good about who we are right now as a football team. Are you going to get uh, the Heritage family, Nick Ponterigo, and everybody all kind of get all your coaches' faces on their car the way your face is on your car? Uh, it would be nice, uh, you know. We maybe we I'll put your face on the front of my car when I see you next time, and um, you know, there's a couple different ways to do that, you know. Uh, Wait. Where's the love? What happened to our love? What, <laughs> you, you're, you, you kind of are passive aggressive here. You attack, <laughs> you attack us, and then you know. Poor, I would, no, 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 not us. I would never say anything bad about your staff. Poor, <laughs> poor Nick. I mean, you're, you know, he, you were attacking him on. Text message. You know, There's a small text war that I went had, on. I had to intervene there and try to calm it down a little bit. You are actually, you do end up usually being the voice of reason for some reason. I don't understand. But not like when you're talking, only when you're texting. <laughs> Much more rational texter than I am in anything. I think this actually, we we almost met everybody. We got to do this in studio where we can get more microphones and more stuff for you guys. Or we should be out at some practices maybe. You're welcome. We have that beautiful press box. You could do your show up there during practice and why wouldn't you do that? It'd be awesome. I'm, we I, serve food. You know, I mean, it's a... Did you see, what you see, again, I'm the fat one on the show, but whose head tweaked when, when he said food? Starving myself at my <laughs> wedding, all right? Just I hear food and I react quickly, yeah. Well, I think it's because of your wedding. This has been since I've known you. You and Coach accused me of eating Tide Pods about a half hour ago, so... No, I don't Not throw me in that. I, I would never accuse you. I know. <laughs> but my, I have a bigger question. Yeah. The, uh, the, here we go. The oh, video God. of, of you oh, know, no. this Syracuse reaction uh-huh. is... I just I've I've been wanting to talk to you about that. I, I think there's help for things like that that we can find for you. And... Are they called double XL shirts? Is that what you're telling me? Well, no. The reaction was worse than well, it was close. But can you talk me through that? Can we put it on there in slow motion? And you no, can we talk can't. No, it? we're not going to break it down in film. We're not going to put it on a big X. You know, get the marker out. No, we Syracuse is in the tournament, and rightfully so. Sweet sixteen orange. Thank goodness. Were you really that happy? Yes, I was. I was like, I'm trying to explain to him like. It's either yes or no. Like, you don't know. I honestly genuinely didn't know if they're going to be in. I thought they were not going to get in. So I was – that was not faked. That was not 
That was real. You couldn't fake that. You no. couldn't possibly. No. You couldn't possibly. No, the half shirt alone. Who videoed like, no. that for you? My current fiance, but I don't know if current. that's still, still the case after it went on Dude, Twitter. Listen, yeah. you eat Tide her. Pods. You can't be picky. <laughs> uh, guys, best of luck this year. We really appreciate you coming. I mean, I know I had to go to Mohawk Honda to make him force you guys to come out. Uh, and we look forward to having you guys all on the show at different times and having enough microphones for everyone. And, and uh, we, but, but again, we're excited for the season. We're excited to see you guys compete. And all, all jokes aside, Coach, we love you and Thanks for thanks for making time oh, for we us. We love being here, and you know, please come out to spring ball. We'd love to have you, and people you know, I'll welcome. be there. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, on. last year, like I said, for the spring game, it was it was a crushing defeat, but a great victory for you, and <laughs> and I'd like to see that all over again. <laughs> I like that. You're amazing with words. You're just a, you're a, <laughs> wordsmith. a wordsmith. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me uh, let, let me take this to commercial before you say like what Dr. you really Seuss. think. <laughs> we got headlines coming up live from Mohawk Honda next.